Well, this showed up at the shop the other day, and this is the new X-Tool P2 55 watt CO2 laser. And in this video, we are going to go through the setup of this and some configurations that should be done and then some software installation. And that'll be for this first video. And then about a week or 10 days, I'm gonna have a second video that will show some actual jobs being processed by this machine. Just a couple of the features of this machine. It's a 55 watt CO2 laser. So unlike a diode laser, this machine can cut clear acrylic. And at this power, it can cut up to 20 millimeters in one pass. It also has dual 16 megapixel cameras, one panoramic that does the entire work bed and one close up right on the laser head. And this is a really neat feature you can take in the software. It'll take a picture of the work area and whatever material you have in there. And then you can place your item, your engraving, your cutting right onto that. Um, it also can do batch jobs where you can have several and you want to put the same thing on all of them. It'll automatically find them and place them in the same orientation as yours. P2 also has a Z-axis that moves up and down. And this allows the P2 to set the focal length automatically based on the thickness of the material, which it can also measure automatically. The software can 3D render an image of your curved material and then allow the laser head to follow that curved image and engrave along it. So first, let me say this machine is huge. It has a working bed size of 26 by 14 inches. It weighs about 120 pounds. It's about 40 inches long, 23 inches deep, and as it is now, stands about 11 inches tall. Later in the video, we're going to add a riser to this, which will increase the material height that you can work in. And so it adds about seven inches to the height that you can cut. As we've come to expect from X-Tool, the fit and finish of this machine is just exceptional. You can tell just by setting it up that it's really a well-made tool. Everything is packed really well. Um, it's all packed in foam nice and tightly and uh, nothing moving around. So it came in a really good condition. So going through some of the contents here, they send some sample pieces, some cardboard, uh, some three millimeter plywood. The power cord is a standard C14 power cord like you'd have in any computer. Um, this is a flexible tube for exhausting. So at the end of each job, it will exhaust any fumes inside the machine. This is a bottle of antifreeze that actually goes into the CO2 tube in the rear of the machine. You'll see that shortly. Um, you mix it based on the temperature in your area with water and then you fill it up a reservoir in the back and it fills the tube with that antifreeze solution. Comes with a standard X-Tool tool kit, screwdriver, Allen wrench, USB cord, We can take a quick look around the outside of the machine. On the right side is an emergency cutoff switch that you can just hit and shut the machine completely down. Um, on the rear of the machine is the power input. That's the C14 plug and then a power switch. Also back here is fire suppression connections. You can put sensors in the machine that will detect fire and then the little hose inlet there is for a CO2 injection to where if it detects fire it can actually extinguish it. Uh, this is the smoke exhaust and fumes exhaust. This thing runs anytime there's a job going and then continues to run for a few seconds after each job ends to make sure to clean out the whole enclosure of all the fumes. So to begin the setup any of the little stickers on the machine that have the green border on them those are removed. Um, the first one there was the uh, lockout. That's an automatic lock that locks the cover anytime there's a job running. And then the next one is there on the laser head itself. There's a single screw in the center of the base plate to remove it. And it contains a couple of samples of uh, some acrylic sheets and also some foam padding. So taking that single screw out allows that drawer to be removed. You also want to move the gantry to all four corners of the work area to make sure that it moves smoothly. Yeah. 
in order to fill the CO2 tube with the antifreeze coolant solution, you have to take off the rear cover, and that's held on with 11 screws. There's six on the inside, and there's five on the outside of the machine. Once those 11 screws are taken out, then you can pry the rear cover off of the machine and just set it aside. So this is the tube that generates the laser, and I don't pretend to know exactly how this works, but apparently voltage runs through here. This tube is filled with CO2 gas, and that generates the light. And so what we're in here for is to provide a coolant so it doesn't overheat. In addition to being a coolant, it also has to be, depending on where you live, an antifreeze so it doesn't freeze in the wintertime. I looked up the annual low temperature for my area and came up with about minus 10 degrees Fahrenheit, which is equal to about minus 23 Celsius. So looking at the chart, we see we're going to have about a 45% concentration, 630 milliliters of antifreeze and 470 milliliters of water. And then we'll follow that with a second fill of 300 milliliters of water. So we start with the antifreeze, measure it and put it into the tank, and then follow that with the distilled water. Um, you can use distilled or purified water. I'm using distilled water, uh, just a little bit cleaner. So now there's 630 milliliters of antifreeze, 470 milliliters of distilled water. Now we'll power the unit up. It will fill the tube up with some of that fluid, and then we'll follow that with the additional 300 milliliters of distilled water. And here's the last 300 milliliters of water. So while we have this back cover off, we can kind of get a look at how things work here. The laser, as I said, is generated in that tube. It hits this little mirror here that's at a 45 degree angle and sends it into the enclosure. On the inside, it comes through that hole, hits another mirror, which then turns it and sends it into the laser head. It goes in through this hole in the laser head, hits a third mirror, which directs it down. Once the final 300 milliliters of water is in, you can seal up that tank cover and then replace the rear cover of the machine. So that's the assembly for the P2 machine. Now we're going to assemble a riser base. And the riser base goes underneath the main machine and raises it up. It can give you up to eight and a half inches of clearance for thicker material. It also has a cover in the front and a cover in the back that you can fold down and you can pass material through. So you can actually work on a piece of material that's larger than the work area inside the machine. You can have it come in the front and pass through and go out the back. The assembly of this is pretty straightforward. It's basically four corners. Um, the two larger corners go on the right side. The two smaller corners are on the left side. Uh, those are connected with two sides and then a front cover and a back cover, basically. It's all put together with small screws. You can use the same toolkit that comes with the P2. And as you would expect, the same as the P2 machine, the fit and finish of this is really good. Um, it's really well made. It's an alloy metal and uh, very strong and uh, well built. There's a really nice instruction book with pictures and uh, shows how it all goes together.
putting the P2 on top of this riser base is definitely a two-person job. Even if you can lift up the 125-pound machine, getting a hold of it with one person is nearly impossible to reach around it. You have to hold the machine by the sides, the bottom side, left and right side. There's a, there's a space left in the riser base for your hand to be holding the machine when you set it down. So to get your arms around this thing and grab it in the right place and then be able to pick it up and set it on the riser base is uh, not a job for one person. Here you can see the P2 in place on top of the riser base. You can see all the additional height that it creates and the little base plate slides in depending on the height of your material and the, the back door folds down just like that front door so you can pass material all the way through. So now we're going to install the software. Xtool has its own piece of software called Xtool Creative Space. And every time I review one of the Xtool machines, I install this software and each time it has been updated and improved. And this time is no different. They've really made huge advancements on the software and its capabilities. And especially for this P2, it can accommodate all of the features, including the cameras and the positioning of your cut or your engraving. Uh, based on the camera picture and things like that. So while Lightburn is still a piece of software that I really do love and I use for most laser engraving, in the case of the P2, the Xtool Creative Space might be the way to go until Lightburn is updated to a point that it can accommodate all of the extra features on this machine. So once the Xtool Creative Space software is installed, the next thing you're going to want to do before you actually use the machine is to calibrate the laser. And as I said earlier, the laser is developed back in the CO2 tube and then it shoots around through a couple of mirrors before it gets to the actual head and shoots down. Here's one mirror here and that's the adjustment mirror that we're going to use to make sure that it's calibrated correctly. In the X-Tool Creative Space, if you click on the gear up here, Go to setting and then there's an optical path setup it's really simple to do click on the test button and the first thing you want to do is move the gantry to the lower right corner so that's going to allow us to adjust this mirror here if we need to the way to perform this test is to take a piece of masking tape cover this hole and then what I do is kind of push in here so you can see the actual outline of the hole. Close the top. And then there's a pulse button on this test. I hit it twice. If you hit it too many times, it'll actually start the tape on fire. So one, two. So the adjustment for that is right done right here on this uh, mirror at the corner of the gantry. To access it, you pull this little cover off. So under that cover, you can see this little spring-loaded holder for the mirror. And on this holder, there are two adjustments. This one adjusts the vertical aim for the mirror, and the one back here adjusts the horizontal. So our burn was just a little bit to the right. The vertical looked okay. The, the burn mark was just a little bit to the right. So in that case, we're going to turn this one just a little bit clockwise. And that's going to adjust the angle of that mirror and bring that mark over. Before you can adjust those, there are two little lock bolts. Each one has a lock bolt on it. And that's in here. So we turn that one if we want to adjust the vertical. And in our case, we're going to adjust the horizontal. So we'll turn, we'll loosen up this little lock bolt up here. And then we'll send that pulse again and see what the mark looks like. That looks really good. That's just right in the middle of the circle. So once you have it, you can keep making small adjustments until you get it right in the middle. And then once you're done, you just turn that lock bolt back down to lock it in. And that is it for the adjustments. Something to note on these adjustments, if you need to make a vertical adjustment, you make that first. And you dial that in and get the vertical perfectly centered. And then after that, you can go ahead and make the horizontal adjustments. So that's it for the setup of the P2 machine and for the software. 
I've just done a few preliminary jobs with it just to kind of test it out a little bit and I'm really impressed with it. It cut through half inch Baltic birch in one single pass, nice clean cuts. So as I expected, another really well-made machine put out by Xtool. I'm gonna put out a video in about two weeks that's gonna go over and show some of these features on the P2. Uh, I'd really like to go over the curved engraving and show that. Also the support for the RA2 rotary machine. Be sure to hit the subscribe and set up the alerts so that you get a notification when that video comes out. Also, there will be a link in the description to this machine. And using that link, anytime you go to the Xtool website, will help support this channel. As always, I appreciate you watching, and I will see you next time. Thanks. Bye.